ever wondered what happens in your body when you get a cut or a scrape? It's a complex and fascinating process known as inflammation. It's your body's natural defense mechanism against anything it perceives as harmful. This could be pathogenic bacteria, viruses or fungi that have infiltrated your system. It's not just microscopic invaders though. Inflammation also occurs in response to external injuries like scrapes or foreign objects that have breached your body's outer defenses. Even the effects of chemicals or radiation can trigger it. Essentially, if it's something that can harm you, your body will likely respond with inflammation. But this isn't a cause for alarm. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Inflammation is your body's way of saying, I've got this, I'm dealing with the problem. So how does your body respond to these triggers? Let's dive into the fascinating process of inflammation, opening. When your body senses harm, the first response is vasodilation. Imagine a city under siege. The city's defenses kick into high gear, expanding their gates to allow more defenders into the city. This is similar to what happens in your body during vasodilation, where the release of substances like histamine, bradykinin, and prostaglandins causes blood vessels to expand. This allows more blood to rush to the injured tissue, which causes the inflamed area to turn red and become hot. It's like your body's own emergency response team rushing to the scene of an accident. Now let's move on to the second step, increased vascular permeability. Think of it as the city walls becoming more porous, allowing resources to flow in and out more freely. In the body, this happens mainly in the venules in response to inflammatory mediators released from the damaged tissue. The endothelial cells, which line the inside of the blood vessels, contract, creating larger gaps between them. This allows plasma proteins to leak out from the blood vessels into the surrounding tissues. Why does this matter? Well, this leakage leads to swelling and edema, which is a fancy medical term for fluid accumulation in the tissues. This might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually a key part of the body's defense strategy. By causing swelling, the body is able to isolate the foreign substance and prevent it from coming into contact with other parts of the body. So we have vasodilation bringing more blood to the scene and increased vascular permeability allowing plasma proteins to leak into the tissues. Together, these steps cause the symptoms we typically associate with inflammation, redness, heat, and swelling, closing. But that's not all. Your body has an even more sophisticated response involving specialized cells. This is where the real magic happens as the body's white blood cells step up to the plate. But we'll delve into that in the next scene. Until then, remember, your body is a well-oiled machine designed to protect you at every turn. Next in the line of defense are the white blood cells or leukocytes. These little warriors have a crucial mission to accomplish in the battlefield of our body. Their journey is an intricate process known as leukocyte extravasation, a four-step ballet that allows them to leave the bloodstream and arrive at the site of inflammation. Let's delve into this fascinating process. The first step is called margination. With the slowdown in blood flow rate due to vasodilation, leukocytes find themselves flowing closer to the vessel wall. Imagine it like a river that has suddenly broadened, allowing the leukocytes to drift towards the banks. Next, the leukocytes begin to roll along the surface of the endothelium the inner lining of the blood vessel. This is not just a random tumble, but a strategic move aided by endothelial cell adhesion molecules. These molecules act like tiny hands reaching out and guiding the leukocytes along the vascular endothelium. Once the leukocytes are lined up along the endothelium, we enter the third phase, extravasation. Here, the leukocytes demonstrate their true agility they squeeze through the larger gaps between endothelial cells and move out of the blood vessels into the extravascular space like trained soldiers infiltrating enemy lines. Finally, we have the chemotactic migration. This is where the leukocytes are lured to the site of inflammation by certain substances such as complement factors and leukotrients. It's like a chemical GPS guiding the leukocytes to their final destination 
where they are needed the most. Throughout this journey, the leukocytes are not just passive travelers, they are active participants, responding to the signals of inflammation and navigating their way to the site of injury or infection. They are the soldiers of our immune system, ever ready to defend our body against foreign invaders. And so, after traversing the complex network of our bloodstream, overcoming obstacles and following chemical cues, our white blood cell warriors finally arrive at the battlefield, the site of inflammation. Once the leukocytes reach the site of inflammation, they're ready for action. Their mission? To engulf the invaders and initiate the healing process. But that's a story for another time. Now, it's time for the leukocytes to do what they do best. In the grand scheme of our body's defense, the leukocytes, or white blood cells, are truly our knights in shining armor. Their primary task in this process is phagocytosis, a term derived from Greek that literally means devouring cells. Picture this. The leukocytes, like dutiful soldiers, proceed to engulf the harmful microbes and any dead material present at the site of inflammation. This action is quite similar to how a black hole swallows up stars and planets in its vicinity. But of course, without the intergalactic drama. Once the invaders are ingested, the leukocytes don't just rest on their laurels. Inside these cells, a fascinating process unfolds. The harmful microbes are destroyed, effectively neutralized. This is akin to a high-security prison where the most dangerous criminals are kept under lock and key, unable to wreak havoc. Following the vanquishing of these invaders, there's an initiation of healing. It's a beautiful process, really. The body begins to repair itself, mending the damaged tissues and cells. It's like a construction crew working around the clock to fix a damaged building, ensuring it's as good as new. And that's how your body protects you step by step from the moment you get that scrape or cut to the final stages of healing. Just remember, every bruise, every wound is a testament to your body's unwavering dedication to keep you safe and sound. Inflammation, as you've seen, is a complex and fascinating process. It's our body's response to harmful stimuli, like pathogenic microbes, injuries, or irritating substances. It all starts with vasodilation, then increased vascular permeability, leading to the leakage of plasma proteins. White blood cells then take the stage, adhering to the endothelium, exiting blood vessels, and migrating to the inflammation site. They engulf harmful microbes and dead material, triggering healing. So, the next time you get a cut or scrape, you'll know exactly what's happening beneath the surface. Stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of your body.